um, Noel Kavanagh, a native of Limerick, and um, moved to Westport in 1979, having married Marion O'Connor, daughter of Sean O'Connor, who was a, a local businessman. My own background, having gone to school in Crescent College in Limerick, and then on to management within Pennies, which is a retail drapery organisation now quite large across Europe. That's where I did my management training, and in '79, I um, got an opportunity to come to Westport, where Marion's dad had a small BG shop employing three people on what on Lower Peter Street. And effectively, the rest is history in terms of the business. Uh, I was very fortunate to be given the opportunity by Sean, who just had two daughters, my wife Marion and Patricia Joyce. And um, Sean, I, Sean actually started up on the Fair Green, did he? Sean started on the Fair Green in the early 50s, about 52 with his wife Nora. Hmm. Prior to that, Sean had worked with Heenan, MJ Heenan on Bridge Street, uh, who was a relative of his and um, very entrepreneurial man of his time and um, from my perspective a wonderful man to work with because Sean never put any barriers in my way when I, when I came into the business with a lot of enthusiasm and youth back in 1979 and um, at that time Sean was 60, I think I was about 24 um, so it was an unusual mix, he had no sons of his own so he had this young son-in-law coming in as I say, full of all the, 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 the tricks of the trade, as I thought at the time. And um, so I, I started in 79, and, then, and a new company was formed at that point in time. And the, um, that's the start of what is effectively now the Cabinet Group. And um, so, so where was your original shop? The one well, that you started? The shop was on, uh, the, on Lower Peter Street, which ultimately became Albany Paints. We in, 1983 bought Malloy's hardware on Shop Street. That was the biggest single move uh, probably of my business life because it was at that time it was deemed to be a huge, huge gamble. Not a lot happening in Ireland or particularly in the west of Ireland at that particular time. In 1983 things were very grim. So I, as I said, being fearless, purchased the, 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 um, the Malloy's Timber Yard, a coal yard, um, big merchants business. Um, they moved, Malloy's at the time had two businesses on, on Shop Street. They had the corner shop, as it's where we now trade as a super value, and they had the green shop, which, and they consolidated their business into the green shop at that time, and Morris and John Malloy continued to trade there. I opened the store in 14th November, 14th of October, 1984. And um, big boo, as I say, but fortunately, I, I, I got it right in terms of timing and um, scale. And from that move, I subsequently acquired a store in Clifton in '87. The store belonged to the Joyce family. Then in 1990, I moved into Castle Bar, uh, and they're still trading in all of those locations today. And from that, we built store numbers, and today, in 2013, I have a total of 16 stores in the company. We have nine in the ROI, Irish Republic, that's four in Donegal, four in Mayo, and one in Galway. We have two stores in Northern Ireland, one in Strabane and one in Derry. And about seven years ago, we moved into the UK, and we now have five stores in Sussex. So, big spread from humble beginnings, and i um, very proud that I have my two sons in the business with me now, Mark. It, well, he's sales director of the Irish business, and Noel Jr. is the managing director of the UK company. So that's a very quick quick synopsis of the business. How many people do you have working for you? 1,100 plus. 1100 people. We also, the hotel you're interviewing me in here is also part of our business, the Wyatt Hotel in Westport. We acquired that about 15 years ago. And um, 1,100 plus people, successful company, thank God, and we had ambitions, ambitions to continue to expand the business given that I have another generation in with me now. Um, fantastic staff, great team of people that have helped us to build. And the, the, our, our story has been a slow build over a 34 year period. We've gone from, as I say, one small store to now having 16 stores. And it's, it's, that's the way we built the business with, with a degree of, of, of caution at all times, but at the same time, ambition pushing for, for opportunity.
So you've been part of the change in the retail business. Oh, very much. Mm. And it has changed. Oh, right. You've, you've seen it all. Oh, From beginning to end. From beginning to end. But I yeah. mean, when we, when we started, when I, uh, when I got into food retailing in 79, you know, I mean, it was all about Nora soup and, and, and dry products, you know, bachelor's beans, flour, home baking. Things have changed very, very radically in, 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 that, in that 30 plus year span. Now, home baking, why didn't it is making a little bit of a comeback, is a thing of the past by and large. And the way food is presented and the emphasis on fresh and prepared meals, etc., is a really huge amount. And the amount of Oriental, Italian, continental, Asian products that are on our shelves now that customers of 2013 want wouldn't have been heard of in, in, the, in the early 80s. And what's in the future? Well, hopefully continue good business from our perspective, but... Um, and the, 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 is the internet a, channel, a uh, challenge? Is, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, internet shopping, uh, uh, online shopping from, mm. from a retail perspective, uh, it's, it, it, it has more impact and more relevance, in, say, in textiles or in, in literature books than it has in food retailing. In food retailing, they reckon that if it gets to 10% of the business, that would be a lot. Mm. But we are online, you can shop online in our stores, and um, it is, this, we're, we're getting about 4% take up on that. Well, that's, that's a big, yeah, yeah, a big search, start, that's yeah, a big search, yeah. And, you know, it, it, it's, it, it, but people now, because of the, uh, the, the, the difficult economic times, people are choosing to shop around. So the internet is a, is a luxury in terms of there is a cost attaching if somebody's picking up your shopping and et cetera, et cetera. There is a, cha a charge for that, irrespective of who you do that business with. So, you know, it, it, when people are, in this instance, cash poor and time rich, um, they're, 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 they're shopping around and looking for value, so the, the internet doesn't quite work that well at that front. You know. Is it difficult to get involved in the internet stuff? No, mm. no, 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 it's no. become very easy now. Very easy, very easy, yeah. very easy, yeah. Right. So you're, you're, the prospects are good for the Kevin Group? The prospects are good, we're, fortunately, yeah. as I said, we, we, we were careful with what we have done in the past, mm. and um, I'm very proud of the fact that we have a, a company employing 1,100 plus people in 16 different locations uh, across three jurisdictions, as they say, between Northern Ireland, ROI, and the UK. And um, we have ambitions to grow our business going forward. And um, with, as I say, the help of my two sons, and you know, at some point, I suppose I'll have to step back in the lorry and uh, let them push on, but not yet. How do you manage all this? Well, I don't manage it all. We have very good people collectively we manage it. Mm. That's what management is, the essence of good management is to have little or nothing to do yourself, I think. Yeah. Delegate. You just look at the big picture. Well, carefully look at the big picture, yeah. Mm. And, um, you know, see, ensure that we are all doing what we should be, when we should be, as best one can. Well, you've done it okay so far. Yeah, we're happy, we're happy. Good company, good company. And a very important point is that we have employees with the business for all of that 30 years. Mm. Some long, long-serving members in the older stores, the stores that we have for that, that, that amount of time and more continue to be loyal to the company and they're a hugely valued uh, contributor to the success of the business and that goes for the, for the staff who joined us one year, two years, 10 or 15 years ago. They are the people who make the business function and keep customers coming in the door. You contribute to the community yourself. You're known yeah. to contribute to the community. Yeah, oh, sorry, in terms of, in terms yeah. of contributing. contributing yeah. And monetary, the easy contribution, co uh, contribution one can make is a monetary contribution. Mm. It's easy, mm. easy. And, you know, we haven't been found wanting when, you know, we, we contribute to many, many events, organizations, sporting activities, etc., etc. But from a personal perspective, I became involved in the, um, the town hall project there some time ago. Now it's been a slow burner, but I'm very pleased to report, and uh, I think that as has been recorded by yourself, that um, work is about to commence. Actually, it's about two weeks away from starting, and that should, I'm told, be ready and all going well. They're saying we should have our first performances there December 14, which is ambitious. But you know, the contract has been given out, and they are on site, effectively talking to the neighbours, squaring up all the different bits and pieces before they effectively put scaffolding up around the building. Who's going to do it? Ellen and Keating, they're a clear based firm, very reputable company with, with a very good record. It's, it's process, it went to public procurement, the tender process, and unfortunately uh, it, it didn't go to a local builder, but that's 
out of our control. It, 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 you know, as there was so much government money going in by way of grants, that was a requirement that it had to be a public procurement tender process, and the criteria was met by this company, and they won the tender. You're sponsoring a big event here today. We are, yeah. Well, we sorry. In terms of the, the we made a corporate decision uh, uh, across the business about four years ago that we would like our company, given its spread of stores, to be associated with a cause, and we choose chose cancer, cancer and hospice. I mean, it's close to everybody's heart, and it, 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 it touches our, everybody and every family mm. at some point. So. Last year, between Mayo and Donegal, we raised 112,000 euro for uh, and Galway. We had the Cancer Care West in Galway, Mayo Ross Common Hospice. We gave Cancer Care West 12,000, Mayo Ross Common got 60,000 from us. When I say from us, I come back on that. And 40,000 in the Donegal area. So, a series of fundraisers by our staff and management. We have our FOB, our real reward. Uh, card when you shop in our stores and you swipe your card. Every time you swipe your card, we make a contribution to the cause. So there is a significant cost to the capital group mm -hmm. in, in, in the makeup, but, but a, a, a huge amount of fundraising, as was with evidence by this morning, this cycle that took place this morning outside the Wyatt Hotel in beautiful sunshine with a couple of hundred cyclists, and um, that will raise, I think, about 15,000 today. So. Uh, in Donegal, they're continuing to work with, with, with various charities. Uh, not all hospice, they, 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 there were some changes and we allowed the stores to tailor the, the fundraising to suit a particular local charity that they felt needed support. In Mayo, again this year, we have committed to raise 100,000 in the Mayo stores and we have only four Mayo stores towards the purchase of a new site in Castle Bar. The site has been identified and the price is agreed at 100,000, so we have committed within the cabinet group to fund that 100,000 acquisition. And if we have the money raised by December, we'll certainly have it by next March. Very ad admirable. Thank you very much. Tell me this, uh, you're involved in tourism. I am, I am. I was elected to, I was appointed to the board of Falsh Ireland just over two years ago. And that's a national body that, 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 that Overseas the tourism industry in Ireland, and uh, I'm enjoying that. It's it's very interesting. Uh, we had a board meeting this last Wednesday, and um, as you can see, and as evidenced by the numbers on the ground in Westport, tourism has had a very good year hmm. this year, 2013. The gathering very successful, with good weather, big help. A lot of people stayed at home. They call it staycations, and. Um, numbers are up around 8%, which is very, very admirable in difficult times. So that will reflect itself in, in, in a positive uh, revenue stream in, in, in later on in the year when they, when they, when they release the figures. Uh, the, the tourism is hugely important, hugely important to Irish industry. Agriculture and tourism, bringing in euros and dollars from outside the country. And you know, it's an industry that is sustaining a lot of employment you know, we did have an oversupply of hotels uh, post Celtic Tiger, but the hotel scene in Dublin is, is now achieving phenomenal occupancy levels, and the problem is sorting itself out. So, uh, you know, I see a very bright future for tourism in Ireland. We have such a fantastic product. Okay. Finally, what do you think of Westport? Well, I live here. I, my children were born and raised here, and now my first beautiful grandchild, Grace, is, is living here. Um, it's a wonderful town, one of the best. And I know that from, from my position within the Board of Fawcha Ireland, Westport is deemed to be one of the shining examples of how it should be done in terms of cooperation. You, well, in the first instance, you've got the magnificent efforts of our Tidy Towns Committee and the success that we've had over the last 10, 12 years, but on three occasions we won the outright. Then you have Destination Westport, which is the hotels coming together, which is very, un very unique. 11, 10, 11 hotels all working together to promote the town. So that dynamic in itself, you know, has to has, has to speak volumes in terms of, of, of what the town has. Apart from the aesthetics, and I'm sitting behind you here, you have a, 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 the Wyatt Hotel, there's, there's a, an advertisement in, 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 in the Dublin Journal in 1761 or 1781 advertising for builders to um, 
stonemasons and slaters and carpenters to build the town that we're now so proud of. So a bit of history there.